Amos Hochstein joins me now from Tellurian. Amos, when we look at particularly your background and we look at what's going on here at the Ministerial, a lot of talk around policy. How important is energy policy? Who gets it right? Who doesn't get it right? What can governments do to get it right? Well, I think it's a, policy is a critical element. You know, having worked in the U.S. administration for many years uh, under President Obama, uh, it's critical to get the policy right, specifically when we talk about LNG and natural gas. In order to be able to have uh, a mature market and investment, you need to have the policy climate and environment that will encourage the investment in specifically in places like India where we are today and around the world. You have to build infrastructure, you have to build expensive infrastructure, and you have to be able to have a view into the future. So the policy is extremely important to what we do as a business. Uh, and I have to say, uh, the data and understanding where we're coming from and understanding where the market is going to is critically important. Uh, using uh, accurate, critical data, specifically in the gas market, where we have had Jody for the last several years really contributing to that. Uh, th these are all critical elements for us to be able to move into the future. Now, talk to me a little bit about the about America, sort of in terms of what's going on at the moment and the export capacity. We heard that many ships are coming here now to the Indian shore, coming from the U.S., particularly with gas. Um, how important is that relationship going to be? Because America is going to be exporting a lot of gas, and it looks like this region and India, particularly, will be a good buyer. Yeah, well, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about the U.S.-India energy relationship. Uh, we're now moving to the action side, where we're actually doing it. And I believe that India and the government here has taken critically important steps to invest, in, to invest in infrastructure, change the regulatory environment, reduce the taxes, which will now allow for U.S. gas to be extremely competitive in India. So I foresee a bright future for U.S.-India, not political relationship, but energy investment relationship, where not only as consumer and, and buyer, but rather as a holistic relationship between the two countries uh, that will uh, go into the future. Talk to me about gas. Obviously, this is what you know and love, but we heard Fatih Birol from the IA there talking about turning China's skies blue again. And, you know, the fact that gas is seen as the fuel of the future, a clean fuel, um, I mean, how important is gas now to actually fuel future growth? Well, a number of points. Number one, I think that we are all missing the real statistics about where gas is going. Gas demand is going to rise far faster and more aggressively, in my opinion, than any of the analysts are suggesting. And they're all suggesting growth. I'm just suggesting much more bullish. China is growing at unbelievable speed because of the policy environment uh, that they have created. Turning the skies blue. But the skies need to be blue everywhere, not just in China. And people here in India, it was the governor of uh, the state minister here in India who referred to Delhi as a gas chamber just a few months ago because of the poor air quality. Gas is going to be the fuel of the future alongside renewables in order to be able to look at it not only as a business investment commodity, but as a mechanism to clean the air for people to be able to breathe, the very basics. So as you invest in infrastructure and put on more and more gas burning uh, facilities, both in industrial as well as power, those investments are not going anywhere. So we are going to see gas demand continue to grow around the world. The infrastructure is there, the desire is there, the policy is now there, and that's where I think the next several decades. But we are not investing enough in the supply side. So after 2020, we are going to have extreme shortages of gas coming our way that are going to hit specifically in uh, the developing world and in economies that are now putting that infrastructure in place. If you can get ahead of the curve, now is the time to do that. I think that's a message we're hearing at this ministerial here, that investment is a huge concern, and a huge concern for, for all oil and gas, which is the current fuel. And we really have to keep the lights on right now as well. What can be done, do you think, apart from creating awareness right now? But I mean, there has to be a big push to bring that investment back. But the climate of uncertainty that's around, I guess, scares investors away. Well, I think we're in the business side. We have to look at numbers. And, you know, conferences such as this at the IEF are extremely important. We have to have the dialogue between the business community. And I have to say, I've been coming to the IEF as a government person for many, many years. Uh, and this is my first visit to IEF uh, ministerial as a private sector. And I have to say, this is my hats off to Dr. Sun and to uh, the Indian government for uh, probably the most effective IEF I have, I have ever been to. Uh, and part of that is because the dialogue cannot be government to government. 
this is a unique place where we can have the senior levels of government and the senior levels of business talking to each other because you're right, investment is critical and necessary. And therefore, in order to be able to get the investment going, the governments need to understand what the private sector needs, and the private sector needs to get its act together. That means buyers need to understand where the climate's going, they have to understand that we're gonna have a shortage and the prices will go up, and therefore enter into rela commercial relationships now to be able to allow for FID, final investment decisions, to bring more gas onto the market to meet the growing demand.